Oh, the title of this chibi video is called Rachel beat the allegations in Tower of God season two, episode one. The thumbnail is also rage baiting. This dude probably read the Tower of God webtoon. And here's the difference I see between Rachel enjoyers and Rachel haters. All the Rachel haters are anime only. If anyone watched Tower of God as an anime only, there is no possible conclusion that you could come to thinking Rachel's doing the right thing. Unless you just love making people mad. And then there's, I think, webtoon readers. That's right ahead, like 600 chapters ahead. And maybe Rachel does something crazy later on. It's like a redemption arc. And then they're like, oh yeah, Rachel is peak. Nah, there's only those two. Let's see what Chibi has to say. For four years, my girl Rachel has been getting slandered for this scene. And I want to be- And good. Good. It needs to be more. It should be 40 years. Honestly with you free my girl she did nothing wrong she what do you mean innocent what do you mean honestly the allegations against her are false because it's all true what do you mean it's proof right there you see it the proof what do you okay the one way one way chibi could save this is by saying because rachel did this because she's so cringe and such a loser she did this it allowed bum to be a cool thug slayer he's got new drip He's completely cold and ruthless now in episode one anyways in season two. That's the only justification I'll allow. This never happened because obviously Bam is gone. So it is uh, a dead man's word against her word. So overall, free my girl. She's innocent. You're baiting. <laughs> you know you're aside, baiting. Okay. Tower of God season two has graced okay. us with its presence. And my... I wonder what he actually thinks about Rachel. I wonder what he really thinks. My goodness, it has been a long time. Like, let's put this in perspective, okay? It has been four years That's since crazy. season one of Tower of God came out. And the beauty of what I just did, right? We just marathon Tower of God so that it would line up just by season two. Four years? Nah, dude. We just went right into it. Out. And here, I'll just even show proof. Season one of Tower of God That's came crazy, out though. on April 2nd, a day before my birthday, 2020. And During Rona era. Interesting. 2020. Huh. Then it should have done really well because everyone just inside just watching all the time, right? And ended in June of 2020. And this, like, was in the era when COVID was first starting mm -hmm. and everybody was reacting to COVID. That is when Tower of God Season 1 came out. And it's hard to believe it has been four years since this series got adapted. And we've waited that long to see a continuation, a follow-up to this scene. And the fucked up thing is, like, as soon as Season 2, Episode 1 it starts, like, the first second is Rachel pushing Bomb off. Like, that's the First thing you see as an audience, if you've watched this four years ago, it's just like triggered immediately. With Rachel pushing Bam off the tower and being extremely selfish, wanting her own objective and goal. It's just, it's legitimately some wild stuff that happened. It was quite the cliffhanger. And I think though it's very fitting because obviously just as how like anime only's had to wait for the continuation for season two, those that were reading Tower of God from its actual like webcomic, you know, it was kind of in a similar way. Not as long as a wait, but we still had to wait a little bit because when this section happened within the series, there was a little bit of a time frame to when part two was beginning. For instance, the content after the webtoon also had a hiatus. That's crazy for this because this was the end of part one of Tower of God or season one, so to speak, of Tower of God. But uh, yeah, it maybe I understood that wrong. Did the webtoon also have a hiatus? It's just it's crazy to think that it's been so long and we're finally getting to see the aftermath, the continuation, and what has really happened. And so let's just dive headfirst into it. So overall, one thing I think I need to talk about, I guess, and I see a lot of people talking about it, is the art style shift. So I think it's fine. Like, is art style that much of a deal breaker for people? I thought that like it's perfectly fine. Like it's different for sure, but like like a trivial factor for me. If you are someone that probably just recently sat down and yeah, watched Tower of God season we did. one, either as to remind yourself of the content, or you just watched it because you just wanted to watch it, or whatever, or you actively know what season one of Tower of God looks like, you're going to take a hard look at, you know, season two, episode one that came out today, and you're going to be like, this looks a little bit different. You're yeah, gonna it does. You're going to be yourself like the- It does look different, but not in a bad way. I was like, all right. Still looks great to me, but is, is, is this the real problem? The artwork and animation does not look as like, um, let's say, uh, vibrant and just have this very distinct look as like season one. And it's very clear. I think season one had like more lines, more rigid, bold lines to make the characters 
pop off. It's felt very trivial to me. It's clear that the art style has shifted with season two. Now, obviously, it's yet to be seen if this is a good or a bad thing. However, early on, at least from the early ways to discuss this, I could see why people would be upset artistically, like why they'd be upset with the artistic design of it, kind of, you know, making it look more modern or standard for an anime like season two is in comparison to how season one's like flair was with its color palette, etc. If you were genuinely upset about the season 2 animation and you dropped the show because of that, like, I'm sorry. That's gotta be the most monkey take ever. That's insane. Right? Nobody actually thinks like that, right? There's nobody that's like, wow, season 2 animation? L, I'm dropping this show. Unwatchable. My experience is ruined. Not a single time did I ever think that the new animation hindered my experience. This isn't, like, if you take, like, for example, Data Live or High School DxD or a different anime where literally the studio changed and the models fucking changed, yeah, I could believe it, but this is, like, what? Nothing! But disregarding that complaint for now, overall, I do think that the reason why there probably was a simplification to the art style is probably because Money. of certain fight scenes and things coming up for out season Money, two. budget, And I can't really talk too deep about that because obviously spoilers, but there's definitely going to be a lot of fights. There's going to be a lot of action sequences in season two, and I feel like probably having a very exaggerated or over-the-top art style, not animation, but just art style, would be pretty difficult to do, especially when it comes to animating it. It's kind of very similar to the, the One Piece situation with Egghead, like when people were complaining about Egghead, you know, the reason why people were complaining was Wano? because we had these very sharp designs of the characters from like Wano, and then we went into Egghead, and the characters look very roundish. Yeah, I hear that like Wano like changed up the One Piece models, and it was so amazing, and then as soon as they got out, it's just like they dropped that, and it's like, well, One Piece is back to mediocre is it is this true i i'm i haven't been caught up in one piece for a long time or they just they look softer toned overall and obviously the way that was done was to probably make it easier to animate with certain action sequences and so i feel like maybe something very similar to that degree happened with the transition from season one to season two of tower of god but even then though i do want to say despite that obvious you know major discussion point it feels so good to have this series back and i want to point something out here this character by the way i've been and waiting Dorsey. literally like four years to see her animated again she has literally been my profile picture you can literally see it up here you can act really and i still think why i'm better than endorsey man i don't know i i i think that endorsey is overhyped mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna say it Endorsey is not peak waifu. Nope. I think Huarion is better. Easy, clear. Low diff. Actually see her as my profile picture. Which is a crazy thing to say because Huarion ain't done shit yet. Well, Endorsey has... Endorsey was butchered in the anime according to other, like, Tower of God webtoon content creators like Dr. Bonehead, right? A bunch of her character development with the... With the motivation being bomb and the discussion that they had and her opening up to Anak, that was all skipped. But like, Endorsey still had a lot of development, right? As a character. Hwadian, we know nothing about. And I'm just saying that she's peak just because of her design. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> You're up here, and it's honestly just like I've had her since I, you know, season one came out. Since Crunchyroll allowed me to have her as a profile picture, I've had her up there on the top right, and it's gl I'm glad to finally see Tower of God, you know, kind of reanimate her to a certain degree. Using your full name, first and last name, as your credential account ID as a content creator is a crazy thing to do, Chibi, but you do you. Within this first episode. But okay, let's um let's dive head first into everything that we saw. So one thing I want to point out is this action sequence, which looks really okay. freaking good. Like here, let me find it. It's like like right here at the beginning, yeah. So basically we get to hear Kevin's music. FYI, Kevin, Kevin made Penkin. music of season one of, you know power of god but he also went on to make the music for made in abyss anyone that has listened to kevin and uh, rising of the shield hero season one which was a while ago too those are fantastic soundtrack anything kevin penkins touches is gold His music from made in abyss season one and season two they know he's he's godly at his craft he, he is absolutely amazing and i'm just gonna let you hear some of this music that he crafted here in the sequence it's copyright copyright it's so good like yeah Motherfucker, you better have edited this shit so it's not gonna do copyright. It's so good. Like, okay. even, even the choreography here, like, look at this flip here. It's so freaking good. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna say that, like, at least for this sequence alone, they were cooking. Like, Kevin went in on the music. and When Susano showed up, I know it's not actually called that, but the red exoskeleton, 
that part was in the soundtrack really peaks as well. And the sequence with the choreography here looked really good. Disregarding the color palette, etc. that I just mentioned, I feel like once again this shows an example of why they probably changed the art style to a degree is because of this right here. They wanted to have a little bit better flow with the characters, etc. But my goodness though, it, it, it this was a good sequence. I, I really like this overall. And Kevin's music really, like, one of my favorite sequences honestly is like this little scene here with the music, the way it goes like really eerie. Like here, I'll let you listen to it. Susano. Like, listen closely. You'll hear it. I can't listen for shit, bro. You muted it. It's so good, man. <laughs> <laughs> bro, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, bro. You just, did you hear that, guys? He obviously edited it so that he got copyright issues. So it's all butchered right now. But like, you guys hear that music, man? Oh my god. It's so good. <gasps> Like, it's such a good wow. I don't know. Kevin is just so good with having, like, a nice tone of, like, choir-ish type sound, like, orchestra, with, like, just this very darker undertone. He, he He's definitely gotten really good at that. And I don't know. He's just, he's a perfect match with stuff that has very unique styles or storytelling, like, let's say, Tower of God or Main Abyss. And I'm just, I feel like there is no one better to make music for this series. I absolutely love it anytime he is associated with a project because I just, I love his music. I always have it on repeat. But, um, let's get into actually what this episode did. So, one thing that this episode definitely did differently than uh, the actual webcomic is the reveal that who this character is. Obviously, throughout this episode, if you don't see the little subtle hints, throughout the episode, you're wondering who this character is. <laughs> that is obviously fighting. Did anyone actually think like this wasn't bomb watching this show? Like, there's no way, right? There's no way people genuinely were questioning like, yo, who is this new character that looks like bomb, that has bomb's eye color? But it's not bomb, right? Like, do people genuinely think that? These new characters that were introduced in Season 2, Episode 1. But then we get a little bit of a reveal later on that it's obviously BAM. We have a little brief flashback sequence showing Rachel and all that. And it's like, oh, okay, th this is obviously BAM. So there's been a large time gap. There is, like, been a time skip since the end of Season 1. It's clear that, you know, a lot has happened because, you know, the events of Season 1, if I remember correctly, was just Floor 1. Yeah, like, the events, like, the beginning, of the start of Tower of God, yeah. they were pretty much just doing like the the like Tutorial. the first few floors and all that of Tower of God, and you know then we had the season you know end, and so a lot has happened since the conclusion, so to speak, of like season mm -hmm. one. There's been a time skip. like a time skip because we're on floor twenty here. We didn't get to see a lot of different floors, but clearly this floor is a little bit you know dangerous, and it causes a lot of people to basically give up their dreams and you know stop actually climbing the tower and. Then is the floor dangerous? The floor looks like a residential area. It's the test that's hard, right? This is like the uh, the culling part where a bunch of people that got here by luck through party play are now getting filtered out. That's what the 20th floor is, right? The very vibe of, you know, floor 20 is presented to us with like loan sharks being introduced, money lending. Basically, it's just Korea. Floor 20 is just basically just any modern city in capitalism. A bunch of people just struggling to pay bills, all saddled with debts. <laughs> it's pretty much it. It's just, just capitalism city, bro. And all that type of stuff, like organ, you know, harvesting, it's pretty bad. And a lot of people give up climbing the tower because they just cannot pass the test to be able to continue on up. And so because of that, you know, you have... The fucked up thing is the fee that you have to pay to get that test. That's what's putting people in debt. Like, damn, I thought these tests would be like... I don't know, I thought it'd be free. I didn't, they didn't charge us for, like, the first test, right? People going into debt, they don't know what to do, and a lot of people are dying, a lot of people are making money off of people that are just very, like, very, uh, like, unfortunate on this floor, and they really can't do much at all. But, um, overall, the floor really just depicts itself that a lot of people have reached their dead end. Some have given up, some continue to go forward, some can't continue to go forward because they're just so in debt that they have to work or they're literally going to die. There's a lot of emphasis on that. But one thing I do want to point out is... The is ring. The start of season two, it's making it very clear that this character right here Wang is basically one of our mains. That he is going to be a major spotlight mm -hmm. going forward in season two. Bro is pretty much the protagonist already. Everything is from his perspective. Bomb just feels like a side character now who's kind of evil, right? 
Wonder how long they're gonna focus the POV on Wang Nan here. Two, and obviously it's very early on to really get a good gist on how we feel about him if you're an anime only, but for the most part from what we could see, he is good natured to a degree. He has some more serious tones to where he's not, let's say, a goody goody two shoes, but he is someone that tries to be good for the Yeah, he, I think he's a pretty decent person. There's nothing about Wang Nan that made me feel was off. The ring is obviously off, right? But other than that, he just seems like a regular person that's just trying to bet. The Pokebombs? I'm not sure how I feel about his style of fighting. Because she is basically like, uh, what's it called? No, not he. Sorry, not she, he. He is basically like a 1010 10 from Naruto, right? Like, you throw items. Everyone else is making crazy Kamehameha beams and chakra attacks and all these different crazy shit. Then we got bro just throwing Pokeballs. That, that's not my favorite style of fighting. You rely on equipment, you rely on, like, like fucking grenade it's like eh, just eh, you know most part and he doesn't seem to necessarily be as strong as others around him the pokebombs did do massive damage to bomb though that was actually startling the amount of damage that bomb took was unprecedented i didn't think it would do shit it activated like his last stand out of nowhere so clearly they are strong um, so it's a mixture of luck and a little bit of survivability that is basically got him this floor with a little bit of guts as well for instance him just not giving up but uh going back over into bam as a character it's bam baby the 25th of bam it's very clear a lot has happened to him since the end of season one I, like how, I, I, I appreciate Ann and you saying bomb, but does the pronunciation really matter? Nah. I mean, even the fucking show itself doesn't even say bomb. It just says Yoru. He isn't the nice, nice boy that he once was, which was a big thing and a big discussion point that a lot of people had about his character when season one was airing. I hate his character in season one, but I understand why it's the case. And I hope that he's going to be more mature and more quote unquote Sigma. You know, stop being such a simp. But in order to get to that point, you need to start somewhere, right? So I understand his character in Season 1. If you look at my Season 1 character tier list, like, I put him in Rachel tier with Rachel. Because, like, if you want to simp for Rachel, you can go to the bottom of hell together with her, right? You get what you fucking deserve. But, like, I understand why he's like that. Is that he was a white knight or a really good guy that followed around Rachel. Mm -hmm. He was a simp. But it seems like thanks to the aftermath of Season 1 and Rachel pushing him off the tower, you know, he has basically gotten in deep with the wrong people. He is now a part... Is it the wrong people, though? That's the thing. Fug, right? Yu Han Sung, Hwarian. They're trying to make him into a slayer. What are you slaying? Probably the king if there's this is the faction that opposes the king. You're basically a terrorist group. Yeah. But like, you're a terrorist labeled by the people in power, right? King Zahad. But is he really a good person? Probably not, right? So are we really with the wrong people? I kind of feel like I can trust Yu Han Sung. I feel like we might be part of like a revolutionary group rather than thinking like we're terrorists. We're like a rebellion group trying to bring an open freedom to the tower from the king's oppression, right? In that narrative aspect, it seems like a good group to be with. Part of a crime syndicate, you know, he is making people willingly just fail their tests, not caring whatsoever about them, where he looks like he will do... It was wild how he had no hesitation to kill people, though. That part really did cast me off guard. It's like, oh, he's not this innocent boy anymore. Physical harm to them, but it seems like an essence of Bam to where, like, the reason why he started climbing the tower is there because of his reaction. But overall, I do think that it shows that he isn't as innocent as he once was. Yes, in terms of, I don't know, killing. But, like, what about his mentality for Rachel? Because I like this new bomb so far. I like how cold and ruthless he is. It's actually kind of terrifying. I didn't want to get him in the elevator too either after we passed the test, right? But like, I bet when he meets Rachel, he's going to fucking fold, man. Getting my height. I'm not going to get my anticipations up for this kid. The, the true moment will show up when he meets Rachel again. When will that happen? Fucking final. Maybe the finale of season two. Maybe it never happens in season two. And it's kind of sad to see innocence lost. Like he has lost his innocence. I'm happy that innocence is lost. And that's the one thing that, like, Shibisu and everyone else was talking about, looking to Bam and saying, damn, he still has something that we lost a long time ago, right? The purity, the innocence. I'm like, it's about fucking time you become a man. And he is not the kind-hearted person that he always was. Good, He's I'm tired of that. So good. Speak. But, um, overall, the start of Season 2 of Tower of God is good. I First half was a bit lackluster, because, again, it's just like you're just thrown into the perspective of a character that you have no clue with.
where's the regular crew that we're familiar with, right? So I bet a lot of people were confused and kind of a little bit let down in the first half. But then as soon as, you know, bombs showed up, I, I bet everyone started peaking, right? So first half of episode one, I put it like, I don't know, like a six out of ten or some shit. I was like, who the fuck are these characters? Why do I care? It's probably important to set stuff up. And the second half is probably like minimum eight. I would say overall, I wouldn't say this is the most spectacular episode I've seen of this season. I would be completely blunt there. But it isn't a bad episode by any means. It is pretty good. Now, speaking of which, there is something I do need to talk about, which is these ending visuals. Which is going to get filled out later as the, obviously, the episodes start releasing, right? It's a pretty clever way to kind of keep people engaged in the ending and try to see new Easter eggs of what happens. I saw a lot of people discussing. So there was someone that confirmed on social media that this ending song is incomplete. Yep. But apparently, as we get more episodes, the ending song will change. So every episode, this ending song will change up. It'll show different scenes, etc. Looks like Roshi that it has competition, nah. Uh. This is just basically the same shit being repeated, but when one panel being, you know, animated. Just, but in Roshi did it, they're like, see, new visuals, new song, right? So it means that we haven't actually got to see what this, you know, ending song is going to showcase, because the music, the lyrics within the ending song is really good, but the, the actual visuals are very lacking. But obviously, if it's supposed to evolve and change as the story begins, you know, and continues onward... That makes a lot of sense. I yeah, in the beginning, I thought that the endings were so lazy. It's like, really? It's just all just eyes as a HUD. That's it? The fuck is this ending visual? But it's like, nah, nah, nah. These are webtoon panels. They have to be filled out yet. I think that it's a very artistic, you know, decision. And I think that is a good decision, actually. Because it reminds me a lot of, like, reading the panels within the webcomic when, like, you're scrolling down the way they kind of have. Can't relate. This. Um, speaking of music, we need to talk about the, um, yeah? the opening visuals. So I saw a lot of people complaining about the opening visuals. Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't watch the visuals, right? Because of spoilers, right? No, 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 no. You're not going to fucking spoil me, Chibi. Get the fuck out. All right. Thank you, Chibi, for clickbaiting me. And I'm going to clickbait you guys with the Rachel title. Go like his video if you like. I uh, just baited me with fucking Rachel. And then he just talked about fucking production value of the anime. It is what it is.